there is a precedent here in U.S. history. You know, if you go back to the Vietnam War years in the late 1960s into the early 1970s, you know, that war figured very uh, heavily in the election. And then if you fast forward to uh, the 2004 election, it came not long after the U.S. invaded Iraq. The Iraq war was uh, very controversial and it was a big focus of the of the election campaign. But, you know, here we are in 2024. And, and I certainly think that um, the war in Gaza is something that will definitely have an impact on the election, uh, mainly because uh, you have um, so many people in the so states, Michigan, Ohio, and a few others, who feel very strongly uh, about the war and who are very unhappy with the Biden administration's policies, particularly, you know, Muslim Americans, Palestinian Americans, and others. Well, it's interesting that um, both Harris and Trump have been relatively uh, quiet on their views and positions on these wars, and particularly Trump. Trump has been very restrained. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I think that um, there will be a significant impact on these foreign wars uh, on the election. Um, and, you know, there is a precedent here in U.S. history. You know, if you go back to the Vietnam War years in the late 1960s into the early 1970s, you know, that war figured very uh, heavily in the election. And then if you fast forward to uh, the 2004 election, it came not long after the U.S. invaded Iraq. The Iraq war was uh, very controversial and it was a big focus of the of the election campaign. But, you know, then uh, several decades went by um, and you really didn't have any major um, foreign conflicts uh, that involved the U.S. in a big way. And on the whole, foreign policy really did not figure that much in, in elections over that period. But, you know, here we are in 2024. And, and I certainly think that um, the war in Gaza is something that will definitely have an impact on the election, uh, mainly because uh, you have um, so many people in the so states, Michigan, Ohio, and a few others, who feel very strongly uh, about the war and who are very unhappy with the Biden administration's policies, um, particularly, you know, Muslim Americans, Palestinian Americans and others. So I don't want to overstate the significance that those voting blocks um, uh, could have on the election. But, um, you know, I, I do think that the war in Gaza has become a big issue. It has not fe featured very prominently on the campaign trail or in the presidential debates, but I think that um, it could uh, it, it could play a role in, in the election in ways that we have not seen with uh, foreign policy issues for um, for quite some time. And I would make one more point that um, the war in Afghanistan, which of course is no longer a, a war, the, the war is done, U.S. forces left Afghanistan several years ago. This, I think, is an issue that uh, Donald Trump has sought to make into a campaign issue by being very critical of Joe Biden and then Kamala Harris for the botched withdrawal. But that doesn't seem to have been as much of a big issue on the campaign trail in more recent weeks. So I think that really it's going to come down when you want to talk about these these conflicts and foreign policy issues that will play a, a key role in the election. I do think that one has to, to focus the most on, on the uh, Israel uh, Hamas war. Well, it's interesting that um, both Harris and Trump have been relatively uh, quiet on their views and positions on these wars, and particularly Trump. Uh, Trump has been very restrained. Um, he said very little about um, what he thinks should happen with uh, the U.S. position on Israel's war uh, in, in Gaza. And what he has essentially said is that um, Israel needs to finish things off. And, you know, that could be taken in one of various ways. It's sort of an ambiguous comment. It could mean one could interpret that to mean that um, Israel should should ramp up, escalate its war to try to win, so to speak, or it could mean that um, Israel should should essentially wrap up and look for ways to uh, to find an exit strategy. I think this is intentional. The ambiguity is intentional on the part of Donald Trump in order to try to appeal to as many voters as, as is possible on what is a very uh, polarizing issue. When it comes to the war in Ukraine, uh, Donald Trump has essentially said, not criticized uh, Russia. He's not criticized Ukraine. He said that he wants the war to end, um, and he hasn't gone much further than that. Harris has, has said a bit more just because you know, she, of course, is a part of the current administration. Um, but I think she as well wants to be, has wanted to be very careful uh, in terms of how she's messaged her, her views on these wars in order to... Um, reduce the likelihood of alienating any one voting bloc. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, of course, the, the the disadvantage that Harris faces is that she is part of an administration that is overseeing, or pardon me, that is um, 
providing support to Israel, a level of support that many uh, U.S. voters uh, find to be very concerning. Whereas Trump is on the outside, he doesn't have a role in that. He could maintain more flexibility in terms of how he uh, expresses his um, his his position. All this said, I do think that it's going to be non foreign policy issues. It's going to be economic issues, bread and butter issues, as you put it, that will most influence the outcome of this election. You know, people vote, uh, you know, based on their their pocketbook and, you know, their 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 bottom line uh, financial issues. But, you know, I think that these 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 considerations about external developments abroad uh, that that uh, involve the U.S. in a big way, yeah, I think that uh, these these will have some bearing, um, even if not a significant one, on the outcome of the election. Well, I mean, you don't want to generalize, right? I mean, there could be generational differences. Uh, you know, there could just be very differences in pol political views among those um, those key constituencies. And, you know, we could talk about how many Muslim Americans are very unhappy with the Biden administration for its policies on Israel. But, you know, certainly there are Muslim American voters that, that support uh, uh, the, the U.S. policy. So, you know, I think that it's it's hard to uh, to make the prediction. But what I would argue is that since these swing states are going to be so close, you know, any type of variable, and in this case, the issue of, you know, the U.S. position on the Israel war, the, the Ukraine war, and so on, but mainly the, the Israel-Gaza uh, war, it, it could make a difference just because there's so much, uh, they're, they're so tight, these races in these swing states. And so you can't really overlook the significance of any one issue. And especially if it comes down to a relatively uh, small number of, uh, of votes, you know, nothing can be overlooked in terms of potential uh, implications for the election. Yeah, you know, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, I don't necessarily think that the issue of how voters feel about um, U.S. Uh, uh, spending overseas, uh, defense spending, how much it spends on wars, that doesn't necessarily play out on party lines. Uh, I think that you have... Uh, supporters of, uh, of both the major parties that would uh, line up on on the same side and on the opposite sides on some of these issues, right? I mean, you have you have isolationist Democrats and you have interventionist Democrats. You have Republicans and interventionist Republicans. You know, you, in other words, what I'm saying is that you have voters that support parties that support both parties that both want the U.S. to have a bigger role in the world and want to have less of a of, of a big role in the world. Uh, you know, Trump, particularly based on when he was president, seems to reflect that that quasi isolationist um, strand of, uh, of of voters. But uh, one does not want to uh, to generalize. So I think it's hard to talk about the idea of re, you know, refashioning uh, the way in which foreign policy is looked at by voters or by the political leaders that they're uh, that they're voting for. But I do think that foreign policy will be a will continue to be a significant issue in U.S. elections uh, moving forward, at least, um, you know, talking about legislative elections and then perhaps the next presidential election as well, just because, you know, it appears that the U.S. Uh, continues to be very uh, anchored to these wars, anchored meaning, you know, uh, attached to these 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 conflicts playing out in the Middle East because of its interests. You know, this these wars are not going to end anytime soon, I don't think. The war in Ukraine is not going to end anytime soon there, and the U.S. is very close to that because of its uh, military and other forms of support provided to Ukraine. Great power competition, I think, is also something that will make it very difficult to assume that foreign policy would not continue to be a part of future U.S. elections. The China factor, U.S.-China competition, you know, we, we hear a lot about this on the campaign trail, and particularly... Um, when China is linked to U.S. jobs or U.S. trade, anything that could impact Americans um, in a particular way that's tied to China and its economic investment policies, that means it will continue to be a, a political issue as well. So, you know, we are not in the late 1960s or early 1970s when the Vietnam War was essentially pretty close to being the dominant feature in several successive presidential elections back then. We're not at all in that place. It's still non-foreign policy issues that are driving uh, electoral choice. But, um, you know, we are in this era that we have not been in for several decades where I think foreign policy issues will be with us, so to speak, will be with uh, with with Americans and will continue to figure in, um, in elections and electoral politics moving forward for, for some time.